We've been visiting Switzerland with a series of programs and now we've arrived at the southern part of the country where they speak Italian. And we're visiting the town of Locarno. This is a very pretty little resort town along the shores of Lake Maggiore. And you can see the old town here has got an extensive arcade with lots of restaurants and ice cream shops, cafes, and little stores to poke around in. You can have some pizza, pasta. Choose from a variety of delicious gelato flavors. The food's Italian, they speak Italian, and yet, yes, we're in Switzerland. The market sells all kinds of products, especially the local handmade crafted items. There's fabrics and products in wool, ceramics, and wooden objects. You can find some wonderful local foods at the market, like fresh cheese, eggs, fruits, and vegetables. And some of the vendors sell this secondhand merchandise, like old CDs and books, and even music tapes and clothing can be found here. It's all very down to earth, very local. These are casual part-time vendors just selling their stuff. We noticed the paving in the piazza was smooth water-worn stones in various colors, really quite beautiful. Hotel Del Angelo is a convenient place to stay right on the main piazza. A posted map gives you an idea of how small the old town is. We're gonna go explore it. There's a historic oh, yeah. castle here, nearly 500 years old, and it houses the Archaeological Museum. We've shown you that interior in a different episode, so for now we're just walking along into the old town. And you'll notice the streets here are very narrow. There's no cars allowed in this part of the old town. It's strictly for pedestrians, which always makes it lovely for a stroll, very safe for the families, nice and quiet and peaceful here. Well, Locarno's old town goes for about six blocks by four blocks, so it's not really huge, but it's big enough to enjoy a nice stroll and have a poke around in the art galleries and look in some of the antique stores. Quite a few modern shop fronts along with the mix. To give you an idea of the scale and location of the old town, look at the map. It shows the overview of Locarno and then the Piazza Grande, and just above it, those few streets, the pedestrian zone of the old town. You'll notice as you walk around these quiet lanes, there are not many tourists up here. It's mostly local people. It's just a few blocks off of the main piazza, but many visitors wouldn't even realize that this pedestrian zone is right next to the main square of town. So by all means, when you're in Locarno, go ahead, enjoy that Piazza Grande, and we'll show you the waterfront shortly and some other parts of town. But be sure to get up into these little lanes. It's so charming, and there's a few bars and cafes up here and the little shops, and it's a residential zone as well. It's a place where locals just spend some time a day chatting with their neighbors and generally just hanging out. It's kind of a simple place to enjoy the mundane aspects of living here. You'll feel part of the scene instead of being just a tourist. Those narrow lanes are just a short block over from the main piazza, so it's easy to just walk back and forth, go to one area and then come back down to the big square. You'll find the tourist information office on the Piazza Grande and a nice new modern building, and they've got plenty of maps and brochures and information for you inside. There's a map posted out front that shows the location of Locarno and Lake Maggiore. There are some nice boat rides you can take on Lake Maggiore, and we'll be showing you a couple of those in other episodes that we're presenting about the Locarno area. It is a lakeside town after all, and it has a beautiful waterfront. There's a park and promenade and small boats and ferry boats and all kinds of nice sights to enjoy along the water's edge. And the town is right across the street, so everything is very convenient here in the heart of Locarno. Right away, the pedestrian zone begins again, lined with those arcades, and that leads you back into the Piazza Grande. You'll always find yourself coming back to this main central square. 
And there are some smaller piazzas up on the side streets as well. You find yourself walking in circles here, but when you come to a spot from a different angle, it looks like a different street or a different restaurant. Very pleasant temperature. We're traveling in the month of November and the temperatures are just perfect. They have a Mediterranean climate here in the Ticino in the south part of Switzerland. You'll even find palm trees growing. They don't get any significant winter weather here. It doesn't get real cold. They might have the occasional dusting of snow, but that would be pretty unusual. The climate here is technically classified as humid subtropical, which might be kind of surprising to hear about Switzerland, but it is the southern sunny section. In fact, they have sunshine more than 56% of the time, and that's pretty high and it rains a little bit about 103 days a year on the average. So it's all really quite moderate, quite lovely temperature. Great place to come any time of the year. Well, now we're getting hungry, so we tried Ristorante Sensi. It was only a block from our hotel, so very convenient and worked out really well. They had lovely pastas and salads and fish, chicken, meats, everything you could imagine on the menu. It's the beauty of eating in Ticino. You can have Italian cuisine and Swiss service. Note the arugula on top looks like a salad, but it's really a pasta dish with pesto and arugula and tomato and sliced Parmesan, delicious. Lasagna express service, hot right out of the kitchen. And they have a wide variety of other dishes, chicken, fish, and vegetarian items. Now we are going to introduce you to Stefano, a local wine expert, who will tell you all about Swiss wine. In this part, in the Italian part of, of the Switzerland, the most planted uh, grapes is Merlot, vinified in white, rosé, and red, with different kind of aging in inox or oak barrels, or the usual barrels, depends, the, the owner and the seller. In the east part of uh, Switzerland, the most planted grapes is uh, Pinot Noir. And the white grapes are very dry, fruity and aromatic grapes. Of, uh, the west part of Switzerland, who they speak in usually French, uh, they have planted more white grapes than red. The white grapes is uh, Chasselas grapes, something you pick from, from, from this side. And the red grapes is Pinot Noir, but they have all something special like Cornalen, Human Rouge, uh, a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, exactly, or something like this. Mm -hmm. And in the north part of Switzerland, where the region of Zurich, uh, in this part, they have more or less just Pinot Noir grapes for the red and Reuschling for the white uh, grapes. Mm. In the Italian side, 85% of Ticino is uh, planted with uh, Merlot grapes, mm -hmm. aged in oak barrels. Mm -hmm stronger with a nice uh, herb and the fruity taste. Mm -hmm. Where the Pinot Noir is lighter? No, like Pinot Noir is not fruity. lighter, but it's absolutely different grapes. Uh, the mm -hmm. Pinot Noir is, we can say, not more elegant, but quite difficult to, 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 to vinify. Mm -hmm. And Pinot Noir from the Grison give uh, very spicy um, mm -hmm. wine. Uh, more in direction like taste with the white pepper and chocolate and tobacco. In this side you have more uh, red fruits and a little bit of herb taste. In America we don't get much Swiss wine. Uh, there's not much export. Of Swiss the problem wine. they have a very small producing. You have to think Switzerland is a very small uh, place. Mm -hmm. uh, we have about 5,000 hectares and it doesn't export for, for the for so most is consumed in... It's consumed inside, exactly. Because we are... Yes, absolutely very, very small to producing. Here in Ticino we have 1,050 hectares of grapes and the producing is absolutely so not stays, enough to, to export. In, in, it stays in Switzerland. Absolutely. 90% stays. 90%, yeah. Or more than 90%. 95, <laughs> something like wow. that. And the name of the shop? Vino Veritas in Locarno. Right. It's Canetti Wine. Shops, Canetti wine shops. Okay. While visiting Locarno, we've been staying at the Hotel Geranio, which proved to be very convenient. It's only a block away from the train station and two blocks away from the Old Town and the Piazza Grande. The waterfront is right across the street. 
everything is splendid and it's a beautiful hotel very clean and quite affordable typical of european hotels the breakfast is included in the price of your room and it's quite a nice spread there's breads and there's meats and cheeses and juice and cereals and fruits and all kinds of good stuff it's always nice to get together with your fellow travelers in the morning and chew over last night and yesterday and the day's activities coming up. The hotel setting right on the waterfront provides a nice view for us in the morning. You could sit outdoors if you like, enjoy the terrace and the scenery, or just take your breakfast inside the dining room. In other episodes, we'll take you outside Locarno to nearby Ascona and Lugano.